Hello my soccer universe and let's review the midweek round of Serie A. Yes, I decided to do it. And yeah, it was overall a weird round with many, many, many draws, but the teams that won took a, a big leap uh, in the table as we will see and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter due to these draws and so at least especially on the top and as you can already guess up there we have a change in my projection and also you see Fiorentina is not hanging in the 8th spot here anymore no we have some Doria there so Fiorentina also not go, going back on track quickly the headlines the uh, Inzaghi Derby ends in a draw, Juve and Atalanta play out a great game also ending a draw, Milan again dropping points and that allows Inter to come uh, uh, close up to a point against the Napoli side that was actually quite good but they lost Mertens, they lost Insigne and they ended up losing the game and Roma also is entering the mix. So a little bit more on the, on, on the games. I actually saw quite some of the Serie A action. Um, this midweek it was really hard to choose between all the leagues. But I actually followed the Benevento Lazio game. And um, I was curious how will the Inzaghi Prize. But they, they really, they hugged, hugged each other before the game. And even after, uh, after the game you, you could see they have uh, quite some respect for each other. Which I knew in a way anyway. But you know, I ne I've never seen it. So I actually wanted to see that. So uh, very nice and my wife said they really look so similar to each other and they do, they do. Um, Immobile gives Lazio the lead after Milinkovic Savic cross with an incredible uh, shot. I think it was almost back heel or whatever. It, it, was, it, it was not the easy shot, let's put it, put it, put it there, to give them the lead in the 25th. But Schiattarella just before the half uh, equalized for Ben Benimento, although Lazio had the more of the game. In the second half, Lazio was pushing, but could not find the winner. And you know, Benevento always threatening. So it ends with, for Lazio, probably a rather disappointing draw. The big game on Wednesday, uh, one that you should have watched, <laughs> is you, Juve against Atalanta. That was a really, really, really good game. And I would have to say for most of the time, Juventus was the better team. There was early on a big chance where Morata... Um, is running alone to goal. He has Ronaldo on the side and while he could take the shot, he gives the ball to Ronaldo and then the ball comes back to him and he uh, tries to attempt a uh, back heel and completely botches and it goes uh, outside, uh, not in, in, in the goal. The only thing that saves him is he was offside. But uh, Chiesa with a great shot uh, gives Juventus the lead in the 29th. Uh, Juventus really looking good in that one, I have to say. Um, second half, Atalanta brings on Papu Gomez, who is the other big story in Serie A, the fallout between Gasparini and Papu Gomez. And Papu kind of saying, yeah, uh, when I leave, I will tell you what happened. So uh, that seems like a big developing story right there that is, uh, you know, I cannot, at, the, at this moment, I cannot imagine Atalanta without Papu. To be honest, but uh, will I take Papu anytime? Any, he's he's a great player. I love watching him play. But yeah, with him, the whole Atalanta game is taken to the next level, and they get actually the equalizer through Freuler. And just in this uh, excitement of uh, getting the equalizer and maybe even pushing there, and you could feel that At At Atalanta had still a little bit more. Um, uh, fitness than Juventus. Juventus was kind of declining towards the end of the game. Big a penalty is called. <sighs> Again, Atalanta uh, penalties given against Atalanta. We had a story last season. This fitted right in there. I honestly think it was not a penalty. The way Chiesa is falling, he just feels the hand and and, take, and suddenly all the life force exits. Um, however, I have observed as of late, whenever I feel that there's a penalty unjustly given, the penalty is not converted afterwards. And this happens as well. Ronaldo steps up and the penalty is saved by Golini. It was not the greatest of penalties, but it was well, well placed, but Golini can save it. So yeah, uh, it hangs on. I have to say then, in the end, 
Uh, I think a draw was then fair because Juventus then could settle uh, down. Atalanta didn't have the great chances any, anymore, but there was a time, especially early on in the second half, um, where, I, where I thought At Atalanta might actually take something. But it ends in a 1-1 draw. 1-1 draw also between Fiorentina and Sassuolo and then Genoa Milan. Oof. Frustrating, frustrating. We had already a 2-2 against Parma and I really have to say uh, Milan is having trouble with injuries. Now Benacer is out and I have to say uh, injury to Benacer that really 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 worries me. And what gets even worse that uh, within this game now uh, Kessie had one task not get booked again and he yeah, gets booked. And I think Cassie is out for the next game. So uh, that really, really has me worried. Really. Because uh, Cassie and Benacer, that's the best defensive midfield in, in Italy. And uh, Kronic, Tonali, I think, can make up for that. But Kronic is not, uh, is not a, a valid substitute. Then you have uh, Kier missing. You have Ibrahimovic still missing. I think Kier... A lot more Gabia missing, so we had to play. Uh, Kalulu had to play in uh, as a central defender, which is not his position, and it showed because he made the mistakes on one of the goals that was scored by Genoa. The first half was a rather drab affair. I have, have to say, Milan uh, slowly getting into game, having a big chance by Rebic that he has to pull, pull away, and that's the other thing. Rebic doesn't look right. Leao also, uh, coming back from injury, also doesn't quite look right yet. But, and then, you know, I also have to have, have, have to Pioli. Pioli is trying to do some rotation as well. Against January, you still ex expect to win, although they are the last team that beat Milan. And they almost were the one to end the run, like back in the uh, early 90s when Parma ended the unbeaten streak. So started the unbeaten streak and ended the unbeaten streak of Milan. Destro twice gives uh, Genoa the lead, but um, other than that, uh, Calabria can equalize uh, Schoartl thereafter. And then when I thought that Genoa had beaten Milan, uh, Kalulu gets the equalizer. And at the very end, uh, there was a huge chance for Genoa, for, 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 for but Milan hang on to this 2-2 draw. Maybe they could have found a winner, yeah, but it was not to be. And then the big game between Inter and Napoli. I mean, I, the games were parallel and I had actually, I wanted to watch Inter Napoli more, but then I said, nah, uh, it's, it's Milan. I have to watch Milan and probably I, I chose the better game. Um, wonderful jersey matchup. Um, however, a big thing already happened early in the first half when Mertens uh, hobbled off injured, self-inflicted injury. Um, but I always had the feeling that the game was open with Napoli having the slight advantage, creating chances. And it really took uh, the next level in the second half. And I think a great chance by Insigne, where he wanted to back heal it in. And uh, Handanovic, with uh, his arm, puts it on the bar. <sighs> Those are the goals that need, 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 need to be. But the game really turned uh, on the 71st minute when uh, it was a penalty. Well, it's been a... Uh, it was a little bit unlucky, the whole thing, but it was a penalty. And Insigne totally cannot take, 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 take it, curses at the ref, is well, not even at the ref, but uses foul language, let's put it that way, and is sent off. Lukaku converts a penalty, and that kind of decided the game, although Inter were pushing, uh, me, uh, Napoli were pushing, Inter really holding just back tight. Uh, yeah, grinding out the re result, Petania hitting the post again. And so Inter gets the win, and as we'll see, they're now within one point of Milan. And I call it now Inter are the favorites, and they will probably go on to uh, win this Scudetto, most likely. And then, yeah, uh, Parma, Calia, Nil, Nil, Spezia, 2-2. Uh, Sampdoria gets a win at Hellas. That had me... Uh, wide-eyed a little bit and then Roma yesterday against, against Torino it was a really weird game because Torino like I always whenever I see Torino Torino is well in the game but either they don't convert the chances or they combust and this time it was Singo who within 14 minutes gets two yellows and is sent off and then yeah Mkhitaryan very two with a penalty penalty make it 2-0 for Roma at the half when Belotti had or or, or a good chance Belotti had uh, more chances in the second half but you know Pellegrini makes it 3-0 you think it's done Belotti a little bit later uh, pokes it in 
uh, in the 73rd minute. And Torino was actually pushing to get maybe a second goal, which really would have put Roma on the back uh, foot a little bit. But overall, I have, have to say, uh, Roma was rather comfortable. So with all that, we have a few movements. Yes, there were many, many draws, but as I said, teams that won uh, move up, or in the case of Napoli, if you lose, you move down. Juve with the draw goes ahead of Napoli. Roma also goes ahead of Nap Napoli. Sampdoria makes a huge leap, and Genoa also uh, goes past Torino. However, the big thing, of course, is that now Milan is only one point. I really thought ahead of the, those two games that Milan will um, get six, should get six. But I have to say, the way the games went, and given all the injuries, I'm actually happy that they kept up the unbeaten streak. So, yeah, uh, probably, we, as, as, as we see, uh, they have a not so easy game coming up next. Uh, they will lose the top spot before Christmas, I have to say, but let's see where, where it goes. Um, Atalanta still has a game less, so if we adjust, uh, we also see that Atalanta makes up a position and we have kind of a top seven that looks rather good, I have to say. Uh, maybe swap Sassolo, Hellas Lazio is probably also a little bit in there, but I have to say, now I said it, the top four including now Napoli set of Roma uh, look good and now it's Roma is in the conversation as well so yeah I should not make any bold predictions on this channel on the weekend we have actually quite the interesting game I think for me the most interesting of course is Sassuolo against Milan uh, we have a Lazio Napoli and Atalanta Roma matchup uh, late on Sunday uh, and Sassuolo Milan er er early on so those the last three here are definitely uh, games to pick Juve uh, should get a win at Parma Inter should get a win at Spezia so yeah uh, the pressure is on, <laughs> on, on Milan. Uh, let's hope that Zlatan gets back. Anyway, let, let me know what you thought about this midweek round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.